let's go to Armenia, last on the list. And look at that wonderful scenery there. So where is Armenia? Uh, I must admit, I wasn't 100% sure exactly where it was before I started doing these tours, but it's in the central Caucasus. So it's quite a small country, about the size of Wales. And you can see there, it's landlocked. So it's surrounded by Turkey, Georgia, Azerbaijan and Iran. Uh, it's the only sort of Christian country in the region and very mountainous as well. So everything is a thousand feet plus. So I did a recce in 2013 and we've been running trips there sort of most years since. So it's a week long tour to the country. And we start off in Yerevan, the capital, really lively, fun city, and then go sort of anti-clockwise around the country for a few days, ending up back in Yerevan. And then we head off for the last couple of days of the trip uh, to the southeastern part of the country. So you, you really do get to see the landscape and culture of this country on this tour, as well as lots of butterflies. Uh, we're ably assisted by a couple of people. We have a, a, a local guide who uh, uh, has been in the past, has Mick on the left there. She's uh, amazing on the logistics. Uh, it's fantastic. You're just in the middle of nowhere and she sort of uh, goes on to mobile phone and we stop and somebody jumps out of a bush with lots of uh, sort of uh, picnic rolls and salads and things. It's amazing, really. Uh, on the right is my phone a friend, Karen, who's uh, the number one butterfly expert in Armenia. She's discovered uh, a number of new species in recent years and got a fantastic website, actually, butterflies there. So Karen is amazing. He's always on hand if I'm struggling with one of these very difficult butterflies and there's lots of difficult things out over there. I'll uh, send him a picture in the evening he'll get straight back to me so he, he, may, he helps make me look good so there's the backup so let's start the tour then we uh, as i say we arrive in yerevan flying over from the uk uh, and looking over there towards mount aragat in ararat sorry in turkey so uh, turkey is very nearby to the capital and uh yeah, so that takes the best part of the day, to be honest. We arrive in the evening, so that day is mostly travelling. Day two, though, we're getting stuck into the butterflies and wildlife. And um, we drive for about an hour to some wonderful semi-desert habitat at a place called Hatsavan. Sort of en route, we might see flocks of uh, rose-coloured starlings, rollers uh, on the wires, lesser grey shrikes, that sort of thing. So lots of uh, a good introduction here, lots of the browns and graylings, skippers that we're likely to see on the remainder of the trip in these hot arid areas. Things like the great step grayling, the sandy grizzle skipper, and this uh, Turanian rock, rock brown bottom left. So uh, butterflies aren't abundant there, but uh, it's all sort of quality and new things for people who haven't been to hot arid uh, sort of Caucasian landscapes before. Also, these uh, spectacular thread-winged antlions are common there as well. These amazing looking insects. Very good for birds as well. We've got things like Rufus bush chat, uh, Upchers warbler pictured on the left there, lots of black-headed buntings, and then several species of wheat here in this area, like the finches wheat here on the right, but also Isabelline desert and uh, a number of others. So it's a cracking area for birds as well as butterflies. So we spend the morning there and then we go over to, not far away, to a place called Garni. It's a sort of popular tourist uh, destination because of these amazing basalt rocks you can see here. Looks a little bit like an inland version of the Giant's Causeway. So we have lunch there by this by the river which has dippers and things uh, mountain small whites are floating about and concentrations of mud puddling butterflies uh, we can see birds like uh, 
Blue Rock Thrush pictured there and Crag Martins and Alpine Swifts overhead. And there's, there's usually a lot of butterfly activity whilst we're getting some shade under those rocks, eating our tasty uh, local snacks. Uh, butterflies that are also hiding from the sun, things like uh, hermits can be around the rocks around us. And as I say, butterflies like in the nettle tree pictured here are often seen mud puddling in the area. So after lunch, we'll make a short walk up to the top of the gorge and get this panoramic view of Kosroff Nature Reserve. It's got some of the uh, last remaining areas of sort of dry woodland in uh, Armenia, very important reserve. Unfortunately, it's difficult to access these days, but you can see a lot of the species in peripheral areas. So we'll see a good range of uh, arid scrubby species on that trip, things like the spotted fritillary, uh, the odd spot blue appropriately named. You can see uh, there's the odd spot on the uh, forewing, underside of the forewing, out of place with the other three spots. And also this quite scarce Gerhard's black hair streak. But we'll, we'll probably see 20 to 30 species of butterfly on that short afternoon walk. Then our final stop on the way back to Yerevan is this uh, uh, damp valley. And you'll appreciate it's a very hot, dry environment. We go at the end of June, early July, and uh, water's in very short supply. So this place is, uh, has damp ground, so it attracts mud puddling butterflies again. So you can see, uh, have lots of fun trying to sort out all these uh, blues. Uh, we've got the, in the middle there, there's the Amanda's blue. You can see a queen of fritillary there, bottom left, and uh, another odd spot blue there. And the Eastern brown Argus there. So all sorts of interesting things. There's a loose blue as well. So yeah, really, really fantastic and good fun sifting through these uh, uh, flocks of butterflies on the mud. A couple of uh, closer views there. There's the beautiful uh, eastern brown Argus on the right. So uh, uh, striking the patterning for a small brown butterfly. And then the uh, Niobe fritillary over on the left. So we go back to uh, Yerevan for that night, but we don't. Uh, we just stay for the one night, then we're off again and we drive through the countryside north for a couple of hours. And over a relatively short space of time, the landscape changes quite uh, dramatically, really, to, to sort of temperate looking beech forest. En route, we'll pass Lake Sevan, where most of the world's uh, Armenian gulls nest, and we'll stop and have a quick look at those. And we might see birds like long-legged buzzard, lesser grey shrike, hoopoos, crested larks, rollers, etc. en route. This is a fantastic place for butterflies. It's just, it's a, it's a natural forest with rides, wide rides through it, many of which are damp and it's just absolutely alive with, with butterflies. And it's a, uh, it's quite bizarre, really, because you've you can be walking through it and you'll see a Scotch Argus flying next to a large blue, which, uh, you know, if you're familiar with Brit British butterflies, that's never going to happen over here. Scotch Argus is only really found in Scotland and a couple of places in Cumbria, whereas large blue is restricted to uh, the far south of southern England. And things are also throw you as well. So we have like the pearl border fertility pictured here, which has uh, orange chevrons on the underside in the UK. But over here, the, the chevrons are black, just to, just to cause some confusion when you're trying to identify these things. Lots of other good stuff there. So you can see top left, there's some uh, mountain, some uh, southern small whites or false small white is the other name, mud puddling. We have weavers, fritillaries, uh, dryads, and these uh, lovely iridescent southern white admirals as well. So yeah, a super spot for butterflies. This, and we'll spend all day at that all day there. Good for birds as well. We get uh, 
red breast of flycatcher there, black woodpeckers, honey buzzards, and large numbers of green warblers as well. So plenty to keep the all round naturalist interested. Then we make a short drive, retracing our steps back south to a really nice sort of, almost feels like a mountain lodge hotel in the beech forest. And as I say, you really notice the difference in not just landscape, but temperature as well. At night, you will breathe out and you can see your breath at the end of June. You know, it's quite cold up there. Really nice place, got a swimming pool there, but also, uh, it's good fun to go out at night at dark and uh, look around the lights around the lodges and see a whole range of uh, moths. So we usually uh, see probably 10 to 20 species of moth just by wandering around after dinner that evening. So we're, we're off again on the next day. We're driving again. We're leaving uh, that place behind, heading west towards Guyumri and passing some very interesting landscapes, uh, a lot of, quite a few of these Russian villages, very uh, secular communities, uh, just sort of dotted in, in, the, in, the, in the Armenian landscape. And then we make our first stop to a place called Jajur, and we look at, we stop at this flowery glade which has birds like mountain chiff chaff and scarlet rose finch to uh, distract us, but we're really focusing on the butterflies. And uh, the coniferization there, because there's still a lot of grass left, it's actually improved the habitat because it's a lot more shelter now. So you get these flower rich pockets that are absolutely teeming with, with butterflies and day flying moths. One of the targets is the mountain elk on blue, which is present in good numbers but a whole range of other goodies as well, like the dark veined or mountain small white, uh, green vein white, sorry. Uh, these striking Caucasian heaths, lots of fritillaries, lots of marsh and spotted fritillaries and uh, woodland ringlets as well. So after we spent uh, an hour or two looking at these glade butterflies, we just paused by the bus and uh, this area has a few sort of monuments. It's a tourist area and there's a drinking fountain there as well. And that, that, that leaks a bit. And of course, it's another place where butterflies can uh, quench their thirsts. So we get mud puddling species again, particularly Gavani blues. You can see 100 plus in a, in a tiny patch of uh, damp ground and water. So after that, we head up this uh, beautiful mountain pass looking for butterflies. And a lot of the interesting stuff is, is at the, in the bottom, those, the valley bottom through there. So things like the Savinsky's green hair streak and uh, Osiris blue, purple shot coppers and all bread under wing skippers. Lots of butterfly activity all the way up the track in this uh, beautiful pass. And good for birds as well. We get golden eagles there every time seems a really good spot for them plus things like rock thrushes and woodlarks and uh, white-throated robins and ring goozles as well okay so then we uh, go to a bit of a contrast really this hotel in Guyumri. it's uh, incredibly over the top in in what is a sort of uh, earthquake ravaged town quite a poor town and you're half expecting Liberace to wander down the staircase. It's <laughs> quite bizarre in some ways, but, uh, but very plush as well. So we, we stay there for one evening, but, and we go out to dinner actually in this amazing fish restaurant where the fish are swimming around you basically. As you sort of walk to the restaurant, you can see the wooden sort of uh, uh, decking and tables here with a canopy cover some amazing bread ovens there as well and they uh, harvest uh, sturgeon so you get these uh, char grilled sturgeon ste steaks in the evening which are really delicious so after our stay in Guyumri we start heading southeast towards Mount Aragat which is the central by far and away the largest mountain in Armenia passing these uh, 
amazing colourful displays of wildflowers. There's just poppies everywhere as you go through the landscape, which is nice to see. And the other thing you'll notice about the slides, you won't see any fences. The whole country seems to be on fence with sort of strip agriculture and uh, shepherds wandering around tending their flocks of cattle, sheep and goats. So the first stop as we climb Mount Araga is the juniper zone, which are this scrubby habitat with interspersed with species rich grassland. And there's a lot of butterflies in this sort of environment, things like the yellow banded skipper, knapweed fritillaries, lots of twin spot fritillaries. This is the first day we start seeing those in quantity and a number of species of skipper like the marbled here, for example. It looks like a good birding habitat, doesn't it? And in fact, it is. It's uh, got loads of quality birds. It's, it's easy to get distracted uh, looking at the butterflies, things like autumn and bunting, white-throated robin, uh, radzak center, blue throats, uh, superb range of birds there as well. So we carry on up the mountain after visiting the juniper zone and uh, get into these stream habitats, which again are very attractive to mud puddling butterflies. This time, the main species seems to be the black vein white, which is extremely abundant. You'll see groups of two, three, four hundred at once, but also lots of grizzle skipper types as well. And it's unusual to see things in, in early July, things like orange tip, which have long gone over in the UK, just a reflection of these, uh, just the bizarre range of microclimates you get in some of these hot mountainous regions. So as we climb further up the mountain towards the snow line, we, we come into these sort of alpine type pastures where these uh, nomadic curds live in the summer. Uh, it's amazing to see actually these sort of uh, trans transhumans populations uh, live live in the lowland the sort of lower areas in the wind in the winter but uh, tend to their herds of sheep in the summer in these sort of wild barren landscapes looks a little bit bleak even in the sunshine doesn't it so there's another little settlement settlement there and the group of sheep so when we get to the top of the mountain, it's cold and barren, but there is one, so not, not that great for butterflies, but there is one ultra rarity, uh, the Bowden's white, which uh, we've seen on, been lucky to see on every trip, usually managed to get a bit of sunshine up there. And again, lots of uh, really good birds. I think the birders in the audience will be licking the lips at uh, some of these birds. Things like the Crimson Wings Finch, Lamagaya, uh, the Red Fronted Serra in there, bottom left, and then bottom right, the Alpine at Centre. So, I mean, this trip, apart from visiting the wetlands, it gets more or less, and not going for the, trying to see some of these snowcocks, it gets pretty much the same birds as the, uh, the birding trips. So after a visit to Mount Arraget, we retrace our steps back to Yerevan in one of these big sort of uh, big roomed comfy hotels. And uh, so as I said earlier, it's a really lively city. And there's a real buzz to it. I suppose the people have not had uh, sort of post-communist uh, freedom and it's quite bohemian feel to it. Uh, lots of outside uh, groups of younger people sort of, you know, chatting and, and drinking coffee or beer in the evening in the warm sunshine. It's a really pleasant place to wander around. And from there, the next day, day six, we head uh, southeast to some more semi-desert habitat to start picking up some more of these uh, specialist butterflies of these extreme env arid environments. So it's a place where we'll see a whole range of graylings and rock browns. Just gave you one example there, the Klug's tawny rock brown, but also a few uh, special blues like Christoph's blue and small, this Sadie's Heath as well is another semi-desert speciality. But once again, still very good for birds as well, for, for the all round naturalists, things like gray net bunting, desert finch, and trumpeter trumpet finch, as well as Egyptian vultures. 
So a really fantastic uh, butterfly and wildlife spot that we spend the morning at. After that, we head further east and pass through the Arini wine region, which we usually stop off at. And uh, you can see there's no messing about with this wine. It's not, uh, it's not sort of intimately poured. They, what they do is have these huge sort of demijohn type plastic bottles and they put them into two litre Coke bottles and uh, sell them for a couple of quid and uh, give you a sample as well, like a half pint sample if you wish to try it. It's actually quite tasty, but uh, I'm not sure if it translates back to the UK, but certainly in, the, in that climate, it seems to work okay. So the afternoon stop on this day is a, another beautiful flower rich area with scatter scrub and uh, sort of uh, sparsely vegetated hillsides at Langenist. It's another excellent area for mud puddling butterflies, particularly these extremely difficult anomalous blues. So the anomalous blue family you'll see here, it's all the species that, that are either pale gray blue underneath or sandy brown with a white stripe through them and extremely difficult to identify, but there's about at least 10 species of anomalous blue in this area that we see on these trips. Okay, then, then that evening we head to uh, a really nice small town and uh, we, we go to a restaurant that is a little winery and you, you'd, you'd have no idea if it's a restaurant, you just knock on the what looks like a house, somebody lets you in and then you're into this fantastic dining room with this sort of delicious local food. If you're into sort of salads and fresh fruit and vegetables, this is a really fantastic place to uh, visit. All of the meals you'll see here in the middle, they always come with a big plate of fresh herbs, uh, parsley, purple basil, uh, dill, and uh, sort of uh, spring onion as well, as well as these amazing tomatoes and curd cheese. So uh, the last full day, we start in these incredible flower rich meadows at Ganeshik. And uh, it's a really, absolutely some of the best wildflower meadows I've ever seen. It's just really spectacular. And of course there's bound to be, it's a fantastic butterfly habitat and there's loads of stuff there. Things like scarce copper, bulk and marble whites, uh, Good numbers of Nichols fritillary, which is uh, not always an easy one to catch up with. And we heard about the lattice brown in one of the previous talks. We've got the lesser lattice brown here, but also things like large blue and uh, lots of uh, other blues, browns and coppers and fritillaries. So the last stop on the trip in this day is the Noravank Gorge. A uh, chance to visit this beautiful monastery but it's the best uh, place on the holiday for mud puddling butterflies. That's the sort of star attraction. So here's me just uh, soaking up the atmosphere, looking at slightly bamboozled at all these uh, butterflies in front of me. You can see three concentrations here, one on the damp mud in front of me, one on the first island here, and then another clump here. So I'll just show you another couple of shots. It's just uh, amazing to, uh, search through these uh, piles and piles of butterflies and uh, try and work out what all these different skippers, anomalous blues, blues, fritillaries, etc. are. It's, it's amazing fun. So there's another group of uh, various blues there. And then we're back to Yerevan for our last uh, dinner in the evening at one of the local restaurants near to the hotel. So that's the last evening, but we do have one more thing we can do before we fly home on day eight. So we didn't do much on day one, but we make up for it on day eight. We visit the sort of sadly semi-derelict uh, botanical gardens of Yerevan, which is, is basically an urban park, but uh, still have, we still see about 25 species of butterflies there on a typical trip. So 
one of the re real specialities here is the blue spot hair streak, picture top, top left. And we can see getting on for a hundred of those on a single visit, as well as things like Southern White Admiral, Scare Swallowtail, bottom left there, and Queen of Spain of Fertillery. Wouldn't it be nice to have a park like this in the centre of London, wouldn't it? As the capital with 25 species of butterfly. Okay, thanks for your attention. I hope that sort of whetted the appetite a little bit to go to Armenia. It's a really wonderful landscape, incredibly friendly, hospitable people. And we're, we're looking at seeing on average around about 130 species of butterfly on the trip and uh, not too far off that many birds as well. So it's, a, it's an amazing experience, definitely recommend it. Okay, thank you everyone.